I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we set up the Warden to be farmed of its souls to accelerate our machines and bees. Hopefully you guys are ready. Now, last episode, back in All The Mods 9, we set up bees, but what if I told you today we can actually accelerate these bees consistently and, well, produce even more combs from our bees? There's a special mod that is actually in this version that was added recently, and that is going to be Industrial Foregoing Souls. And yes, it does require you to have some sort of Industrial Foregoing knowledge and set up in order to get started. And thankfully, we already have all of those things out of the way. Now, you may have missed this mod because it literally just has three items. We have a Soul Laser Base, we have a Soul Pipe, and we have a Soul Surge. And the Soul Surge is what we're going to use today. It can actually block accelerate or uh, tick accelerate. Same thing, basically, that our time in the bottle does, right? Our time in a bottle can accelerate blocks. Well, this pipe can also do this. But notice it does cost some Echo Shards. And this is going to take quite a bit in order to get these. But I have a plan. I have a plan. We can actually farm them with hostile neural networks. But we do need to kill the Warden a few times. And the way that this is going to work is actually utilizing the Warden. Now, I know I haven't showed this yet, but there is a mechanic built into the normal Industrial Foregoing mod where you pretty much farm the Wither of Farts, or at least that's what I call it, where you place a laser above, the same way you would farm for ores. You'd place the laser three blocks above the Wither or right above the Wither's head, and you would use the, the fluid laser to pull ether gas out of the Wither. Well, this same setup applies to this, except we are going to stasis a warden and we are going to farm warden of its souls. Now, I just mentioned using hostile neural networks, and so I've beefed up my hostile neural network area just a little bit, or at least I've been working on it. And this is the area. Yes, I even have glitching lights back in the end of this. I wanted this to look like a server room, and in the back I have a timer pulsing the lights and this is from the simply lights mod same as those same things we used in our mechanism area and uh i'm also using elite logistics transporters because i want the color of these these pipes these pipes are blue and i think it fits perfectly within this area now i have all of this set up because i need to get my cables hooked into all of these because just like the ones over here we still have to make sure we get our prediction matrixes in here, and then I'm just going to have them automatically sent to a loot fabricator, each on their own, and uh, that should be perfect. And we could even accelerate these with, with the soul thing. So I really need to get this up because I may end up throughout this series making multiple soul networks, so that way we can accelerate anything. And well, it's gonna take some time. So let's get started. Man, I tell you what, this actually looks really, really good. Oh. This, this whole area looks so clean, and I love that I have this nice flickering thing going on over here. Like I said, the whole idea was this to look sort of like a server room. Like I said, it doesn't look completely like a server room because they're very flat, but it still gives off, I think, that vibe and fits these themes really well. And just like that, there we go. We now have our uh, hostile neural networks area set up, and it is expandable. I could always go even further back here or even set up the same thing on the other side because this was very very easy to set up so now that this is all done it's about time for me to actually go capture myself a warden now the main thing we're going after is the shards i believe the echo shards and these echo shards remember we did actually set up a b4 last episode that allows us to get this but it's a small chance and the bees are currently kind of slow um, I am working on getting that faster. Uh, even with genetic stuff, I should have the ability to at, me, at least make our Stella bees a bit quicker because you can actually use honey treats on them to beef up their actual production rate. So I did go ahead and make more of the Stellarite bees, but what I really need to do is actually start diving more into these and taking, like for example, the productivity um, high gene samples, which we have 12 of, and I really should put them on combs and then you spawn these in the world and you can right click the combs on the bees and it will upgrade their productivity to high. So that's how you can make your bees a little bit quicker. Um, of course, getting some productivity upgrades would be really nice. 
Um, but with that said, uh, we need to go after a warden, right? So I have my data model ready to go and I'm ready to wreck some of these wardens worlds because our sword has the chance of pretty much one shotting a warden at this point. Um, and we could, uh, it, it's usually a two shot, if not a one shot, if we get lucky with Vorpal. Oh, by the way, before we do this, I do want to mention that uh, you guys were very, very unanimous in what you wanted me to name our Leviathan. And yes, for the most part, all of you guys were like, you need to name it Levi the Leviathan. <laughs> or Levi, I would call it Levi. <laughs> Levi the Leviathan. I actually really like that. And uh, yes, this is going to be our baby Leviathan's name, by the way. Look how adorable he is, right next to Chad. Haha, <laughs> precious. You know what, I kind of want to see just how powerful our Leviathan can actually be. So let's head on over to the Deep Dark, and I've not gotten to experience this yet. So, let's go ahead and get ourselves a Warden to spawn. Um, and then I'm also going to place down Levi, and we're going to put him in following mode. And, uh, well, the goal is that this guy might be able to do some significant damage to the Warden. If not, I will hurry up and pick him up and uh, save his life. But it does have a thousand health, so surely, surely it will be able to put the work in. Um, man, sometimes getting a Warden to spawn can be kind of difficult, actually, when you want it to spawn. When you don't want it to spawn, well, then uh, it, it just spawns. It's kind of crazy like that. God, you're so adorable. All right, here we go. I think it's like three times this has to trigger. There he is. There he is. There he is. Okay, I do want to at least grab this. Okay, so let's grab this. All right. So what I should be able to do is punch this, and I think it should work just like any other setup, right? Let's go ahead and punch him. All right, Levi, go for him. Levi, shoot him. Oh my gosh, he did. Oh, that's so cool. Get him, Levi. <laughs> He's straight up uh, just annihilating him. Look at that. Well, that didn't do that much, but that is so amazing looking. Oh, wow. And he actually is doing quite a bit of damage because I'm not doing any of that damage. That is all coming from him. Wow, you are something else. Okay, I'm going to pick you up for right now. And then uh, I can just put this in here. So we'll put this in here. I love how the warden does nothing to us now. But one jump shot and the warden's gone. Um, so <laughs> yeah, just like that. It is quite easy. Now, one of the best places for us to actually fight and find warden is going to be on the other side inside of this portal here. And I did say I was going to come back to this dimension and so I am here and we should be able to find Shriekers. And this is just a much nicer area to sort of take on the Warden, I think. But yes, they will be multiple spawning. And we need to we need to take on what, five of these guys? So yeah, pretty much if it's not a one shot, it's gonna be a two shot. It's it's pretty straightforward here. Well, I do wanna say thank you guys, by the way, for commenting. I do appreciate that. And I, I love stuff like that, right? Um, I just, yeah, these, these little characters, I just, I love them. They honestly make the Let's Play a lot less lonely, to be fair. Now, after fighting all of those Wardens, we still only got, got three Echo Shards, so it's not a lot if you manually fight it, even with having, like, uh, some nice enchants on your swords and stuff. Um, so, it is probably gonna be best for most mobs to take them on inside the simulation chambers here. Um, and, uh, that goes for, for example, the, the boar and all of that good stuff. Now, um, there's one thing that I glossed over when setting this up, and that is that I need a way to actually pull the predictions out of here, the generalized predictions. And to do that, I'm just setting an importer on the back, and we can actually pull those out from the back. And this makes it really easy to just set up an importer back here and make sure we put this on whitelist mode and set the actual prediction that we're farming for each of them. Now, with all of that prep work done, we can start farming ourselves some souls. And yes, like I said, this is a new mechanic in industrial foregoing. So I've went ahead and I've produced my soul laser base. This thing right here requires skulk catalyst, which you can farm. But uh, if you're going to be making one, this is not too difficult to get. It actually, I believe, is dropped by the warden. Um, so you can see right here. And uh, we also need a shrieker, which you could 
get from just simply silk touching, I believe. And then the advanced machine frame, which you do need the pink slime recipe. We've automated this in past episodes, so definitely check those out if you haven't already. But this right here is, uh, is super simple to make, and it is actually going to go in the spot that I have set here. Um, so let's go ahead and grab some placement blocks like cobble. And you're probably going to want to set this up before placing the warden in. So let's go ahead and break this. And I am three blocks up. So you can really see it with the way I have this set up. But there is a stasis chamber down here, which is going to hold the warden in place. And then we have three blocks up, just like you would set up for the wither to produce ether gas. We are then going to place our soul laser base right in here. So pretty straightforward so far. Um, there's still some more things that we need to do, right? So let me go ahead and clear out all of this glass. Uh, we need to get some power here, but what I really want to set up is I want to get all of my lasers ready to go. Now, the lasers are actually going to take up these spaces right here. And yes, right now they are turned the wrong way, but we can simply use a wrench. And you can get away, by the way, with just four lasers, but I'm pretty sure this is going to be much, much better. And so I'm just going to rotate all of these facing in the right direction. Like that. Perfect. Actually, I might want to move them back one. It wouldn't look too bad either. Uh, but actually, no, I can't move them back more. But uh, you see right here, um, this, so long as each one of these, this bounding box, so long as the sole laser base is within the range, you should be good. And you'll notice there's a lot of laser particles going. That is because once we get these all powered, this is really going to start kicking off and looking for the warden. Now, it does need a blue laser lens in here in order to fill this with the soul and then we're going to be piping that soul from the top to any of these sides that we want and um i don't know if you can like bottle the souls i, I don't think so but for the most part uh, as of right now the only thing i really want to accelerate is beehives and this can accelerate blocks up to four times its initial speed so that is going to be pretty nice now i'm going to power all of these from the bottom this is uh, mostly for looks and there we go. And then the stasis chamber, it needs to be powered. When you step in this, you can be stasis. It makes it a little hard to get out, but if you uh, if you hold shift, you can easily get out of there and it shouldn't be that big of a problem. So let's grab some gray blocks. There we go. And uh, all we gotta do now is get a warden in here and it should kind of be stasis. Now I do wanna put some upgrades in all of these machines. That should definitely help out as well in producing our souls and I have plenty of those so I went ahead and made quite a few upgrades here and so I just need to put one of each I like to just drag them honestly the feature that was added to be able to uh, shift right click them in uh, I feel like this is way more useful than <laughs> just simply dragging into each of the machines but I could see how if you want to place them in I guess that is an option now at least so now all we need to do is pick ourselves up a warden and thankfully we can store a warden in a mob imprisonment tool. Uh, I brought the yoinker just in case this didn't work, but apparently the imprisonment tool does work. The yoinker, I believe, costs experience to pick one up. I'm going to go ahead and yoink one. Let's see. Do I have enough experience? I do not. Oh, I do. Okay. So yes, if you have enough experience, you can yoink yourself a warden, which I've just done. So good thing to know <laughs> that both of these do work. And now for the moment of truth, placing the warden in here. And there it goes. Oh, but it takes damage. So that is something interesting to note. Let's go ahead and pull this guy out because noticing that it takes damage means we need to figure out now a way to prevent it from dying. That's something I was not expecting. Thankfully, I have an idea for that. Now, I honestly think the intended method to be able to do this is to have a spawner that is underneath the stasis chamber that is spawning in the warden. And uh, there is the ability to spawn in mobs from industrial foregoing. And I think that's probably the intended method and then probably to use a mob detector to detect the warden and then send a redstone signal when it's no longer detecting the warden or yeah, some sort of redstone functionality like that. But in my case, I think we can use Ars Nouveau to heal the warden. Now, to be fair, with our current R setup, this isn't going to be too difficult to do. Uh, however, this is going to be an introduction into spell turrets, which is a way that you can actually get kind of techy with R's. Now, the spell turret on its own is not that great. Um, what you want to do with a regular spell turret is turn it into an enchanted spell turret. And to do that, you just need some blocks here and two blaze. 
and this will turn into an enchanted version of this, which will half the cost of the spells, uh, because spells do come with a uh, source cost. But in this case, if we enchant it, it will have that cost, which will make it a lot more effective. Now, to fire these, we need to give it a redstone signal. Um, so my, my plan is to do this. I'm going to use it in combination with an environmental controller. So an environmental controller, I have already made a regeneration controller. So what I did was I went and I took a syringe and I punched some witches with it. And I punched those from the period pyramid in the other dimension. Um, and so I went ahead and made that and I have it set to hostile. And then I set my minimum height, my minimum Y level and maximum Y level and set a low range. And then I'm just giving this power. This is environmental controller it has a lot of cool functionality within RF tools, but this will give the warden regeneration, which will help slow down the inevitable decline of this mob. Uh, but what we could also do is we should be able to use our spell turret and face it into the mob. Now, right now this is backwards, um, but what we want to do is turn this like so, and this should be the back back here, the spinny bit. And then this right here, should be what actually will send the spell to the mob, I do believe. So let's pop down here. Yes, this back part is actually where uh, we are going to put our source. So let's go ahead and put our source jar right here that that is now going to be linked to. Now to get the source over to that jar, let's go ahead and use some source relays. And we are also gonna need our dominion wand. So we're gonna be getting back into this. And I've made myself a tunnel that links all the way to our main source generation. And so I'm just gonna click here, and then I'm going to link that to my relay. And then I need to place a relay here. And this is going to pass through. So I'm going to right click this relay and link it to this one. And then I need to right click this relay and then link it to this one like that. And so now we have source going from there into this one. And then last but not least, right click this and just send it to the jar. And so now we have essentially a way to send source into our jar from our main network, uh, hopefully creating an infinite supply. So now let's actually get into what we're going to be doing to be able to heal this warden. Um, you actually need a tier two spell buck, which is not too difficult to go ahead and make. You upgrade your main one. And uh, I've went ahead and I've crafted up a couple of spells. We have amplify and I've also crafted up a heal spell. And all you have to do is set up an amplify or a spell just like this with a projectile heal max amplify. That's all you need. And it is going to use quite a bit of source. It's gonna use like currently with what we have, it's gonna use quite a bit of it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and create this. And this is where we need to make a parchment. So parchments are going to allow us to uh, craft spells basically onto those systems. So. Let's go ahead and make mage wound fibers and then we'll make a spell parchment. Perfect. So what we need to do is place the parchment onto our scribes table and then shift right click. And that is going to take that spell that we just crafted and it is going to apply it to this parchment. So now you can see the actual spell on here. And then we just need to, I believe, right click this onto our actual spell turret. And so now it is almost ready to go. There is still one more thing that we need to do and we need to give this a redstone signal. So let's do a timer from RF tools. Um, so tools, that's probably gonna be the best thing to do is to just make a simple timer. This is uh, about as easy as it gets to make a redstone clock. So let's go ahead and get that together. And uh, every time this receives a pulse, it is going to trigger. And so let's go ahead and place this here. And then we're going to place this facing down. And you notice that is triggering right now. We want to set this a lot lower than that. Let's try 60 for right now. So every so often, and we're going to notice it's not going to be using a whole lot of source, but this should hit the warden and it should heal it. So if all is done, let's see if this com in combo is going to work and it is healing it. And yes, oh, it is working. 100% is working. And so right there, we now have the Warden stasisified. And this is constantly keeping it healed. Oh, that is a beautiful thing to see. Now, of course, if this is incredibly annoying, in which it really is, we need to go into our sound and Warden and turn off the Warden hurt sound. 
and we can also turn off the warden heartbeat sound. We can make this a little bit lower. I do like to hear it ever so slightly. So definitely having a little bit enabled is probably good. And then we can turn off the warden's step and everything like that if we really want to. But at least those main things being turned off <laughs> would be incredibly annoying to hear all the time. So now for the fun part. That's right, we now get to start actually accelerating. So this is completely filled up. It has 100%. Um, so now we can start to take this and send this to different locations. For example, let's start sending it to this particular beehive. So to do this, we the, the machine that we want to accelerate, we need to hook up the surge to. Um, not like this. We need to hook up the surge to the actual machine. For example, this is going to be the beehive. Um, and then we just need to run cables. So I'm thinking what I can do is maybe right here is where I will have my first initial pipe running down and we need to pipe this out with the actual soul pipes and maybe in the future there'll be more functionality with this particular setup and maybe we'll have ways of transferring this around the base outside of just using pipes but until then we're gonna have to stick with this for now so let's go ahead and get our pipes routed and uh we're gonna be using these quite a lot quite a lot so for now this will just go here and this will just give us easy access to piping this stuff around. So I'll hook this in just like that. And then we hook it to the actual top of the laser base. And then that should be now connected to our soul. And that should be accelerating this hive now four times the initial speed that it was going. Uh, basically how this works. Now I think this is best displayed with a furnace, for example. So let's take some coal and uh, take some cobble and let's just smelt up some cobble, right? And a normal furnace, it's going to look just like this. Pretty slow. But if we were to hook this in, this now goes significantly faster. Four times faster, in fact. And that is what this is all about. Now, will it accelerate it even further if we have more of them on it? That I do not know. So let's see. Let's test that. It doesn't really appear like it goes any faster than just having one initial node on it. So something to keep in mind that this is the initial pace and you can only accelerate the one machine four times. It does seem like that may be a little faster. It's really hard for me to tell at this speed. Uh, yeah, actually, no, it does seem like this does accelerate it even more than I thought. Yeah, this this is going significantly faster having this mini on here. So yeah, you can continue to make this even faster by technically putting more on. That is interesting. Oh, nice. And as I'm setting more of these up, it is kind of cool. It does appear like if you place one right next to another one, it will carry on that pipe signal. So that is actually kind of a nice feature. Now, I think this is going to become a problem because now I'm just going to want to accelerate literally everything. Oh, no. Now, you should be able to use this on just about anything. For example, I am now using it to accelerate, for example, my bee breeding. So the bees are now being bred automatically. I also went ahead and set a comb importer back here to automatically put combs in here so that way you can automatically convert it. And I have a ton of diamond bees that I'm able to go ahead and start using for genetic purposes here and, uh, and place them in and crush them and so on and so forth. So you can use this for just about anything. The hives are amazing. And uh, I have seen um, I have seen some use of this being used for the nether stars, which we might end up doing. It could be kind of useful for us to set up more nether star production over here because I have a feeling that we're going to need a lot more nether stars than I'm currently producing. Um, but yeah, we could accelerate all of these or have a whole area dedicated to uh, just producing nether stars and are being accelerated by that process. So something to keep in mind. Um, that, yeah, you can use that for anything, <laughs> anything that needs to be accelerated as if everything wasn't fast enough. You can always get things going faster. So I have to say, I am pretty happy with this. This is actually very, very nice. Having that four times production rate is actually kind of insane on this. And then we're, we're producing it even further by multiplying it by having two on each. Oh, this is so good. Now, some of these with the way I have it set up can only receive one. But I think this is perfect. It, it does give us these two boxes here that can at least have two of these on here. And if we wanted to use wireless extraction, we could even have three 
per side or or four per side if we had this set up in a different sort of uh, form factor, right? The bottom could also be accelerated. So you could have four of these on one of the hides because you can't put anything on the face uh, because then the bees will not interact with the slab and won't work. But that could get so powerful so quickly. Honestly, just two alone is insanely fast. And the fact that we get to save up some of our time in the bottle is going to be very good. I definitely know that using this on the all the mod star bee would be the best way to farm at least one hive. Having this maxed out on that thing. Oh, that'd be so good. So guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you enjoy this new add on to the mod as uh, Buzz had worked on it. It's, it's so good. I'm so glad this was actually added. And uh, I love that we can now have more things that we can go ahead and uh, hook into this because I'm sure mod devs could use this for just about anything. So guys, thank you so very, very, very much. I hope to see you in the next one. And let me thank today's supporter. Now that huge thanks is going to go out to Divine Crypt. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord and becoming a Discord premium member and supporting me in one of the best ways possible. Ah, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode and hopefully you guys will be there. If not, there is always a Discord, so be sure to check it out. Discord.gg forward slash Chosen Architect. I do hang out in the voice channels all the time, so I'd love for you to join and I'd love to hang out. I love meeting all of you guys and it is uh, super amazing to have such a beautiful community. And guys, as always, thanks for watching. Bye!